Hello folks, it's Echo here and we are back in Undead Legacy. In this video, I'm going to run through how to efficiently upgrade and maintain your gear, including weapons, tools, armor, and mods. I'll go into detail on the maintenance station, how to use it, but first we need to start with an understanding of quality scale of items in Undead Legacy. In the vanilla version of 7 Days to Die Alpha 20, you currently have items that range in quality from 1 up through quality 6. And the quality of the item that you craft is dependent upon perks that you have. So for example, if I come in here to create a baseball bat, the level of quality of baseball bat that I create is going to be governed by perks. So in this case, it would be Pummel Pete. Additionally, as you scale up from one to six, you increase the number of item mod slots from one up to four. With Alpha 21, the Learn by Looting system will upend that, but you will still have the ability to craft items above level one, depending upon your perks. In Undead Legacy, you have 10 quality levels, starting at H and going all the way up to S3, which is S with three stars. And it starts down here at H level. And additionally, if you're crafting items in this, when you come over to craft, you're always gonna start crafting at a level H. So regardless of your perks, that will never change. The additional quality levels also has an impact to the mod slots and the items. At quality level H, you'll start off with a single mod slot, but you'll notice that each two levels that you progress in terms of quality, you get an additional mod slot up to a total of five once you're talking an S tier item. This is a nice addition from Vanilla where you're capped at four mod slots for a quality six item. Crafting a maintenance station is fairly straightforward. The nice thing is that you don't have to have a schematic. You just pop into the crafting menu here, type in the beginning of maintenance, and you'll find the table here. In addition to not needing a schematic, you can also craft this directly in your backpack. It takes 11 different components to put it together. You'll notice if you look in my backpack, I've got four of them here, and then the rest of them are available through broadcast storage, which I will explain in another video. Essentially, this allows you to have a storage container with the button in the top left here clicked, and that will allow you to leverage the contents of that container, whether you're crafting your backpack or in another workstation. Now we just hit craft, and once the station is complete, you can pull it down into your hotbar and place it like any other item. In the room here, you'll notice we've got three different maintenance stations, tier one, tier two, and tier three. We'll cover the functional bits later, but to upgrade these, you're gonna hold down the E button while facing directly at it. That's gonna bring up a radio menu and then click on the arrow up saying upgrade. That's gonna give you the list of components required to build it. Don't forget you need this additional required tool up at the top in your inventory. That cannot be in broadcast. Now that we have a maintenance station, we can use it for one of its two functions, which is either repair or upgrades. So we're gonna start with repairs first and explain how that functions. So we'll use the example of a baseball bat here and typically to repair a baseball bat, you would have to have a repair kit. These are very costly in Undead Legacy and that's where the maintenance stations shine. So if I come into the maintenance station, and I put my baseball bat up here, you'll notice this only costs a single broken plank to repair this. Now that all is increased depending upon how much damage, but it's still only gonna be wood-based items, which is much cheaper than a repair kit. Now you will notice also, if we move on to other items that are higher in tier, like a steel club, try to put that up, this is gonna say insufficient stage level or station level. And I'll explain that in a second, but essentially what this means is you're gonna have to have an upgraded version of this. So we can move over to the tier two station and give that a try and see that this can be repaired here. It's gonna take, you know, higher quality material. So in this case, steel plating. And then similarly, if we go all the way up to the top to this titanium club and try to repair that here, you're gonna get that insufficient station level as well. This is where it gets complicated because it's not just the type of club or tier of the club that dictates which tier of maintenance station that you need to use to be able to repair. Instead, it's a combination of the tier of the weapon plus the quality of the weapon. This same format also plays out for tools as well as armor, which you can see here. So why does this matter? Well, when you go to buy weapons, tools, and armor or upgrade, you want to know what level of maintenance station you're gonna to need to repair and maintain those items. A tier two maintenance station is easy to achieve, but a tier three is gonna require titanium and a significant amount of steel. So just keep that in mind when upgrading or purchasing. So to upgrade, step up to the maintenance station, hit E, and then come down to the second tab here and click upgrade. Drag the item you wanna upgrade up into that slot 
and then it's going to give you the list of items required components to build it and then there's a slot down here or a space where it indicates any issues that you have in this case it's telling me i can't upgrade with mods installed so i'm going to need to take this back into my inventory come up here and modify and pull off this barbed wire real quick now i can come back into the workstation drop it in and we should be good to go except for we've got another issue. It's gotta be repaired up to 100%. So we don't need to leave the workstation. We just come up here back to the top tab, click repair, and we are good to go. So now we go into the upgrade tab and I wanna stop here and note a couple things. So number one, when upgrading from quality H, there is no data cost. Additionally, for that first upgrade, you're gonna have a 100% chance of that upgrade succeeding. So this is a full view of what those costs look like as you increase from H all the way up to three star S. So each time you upgrade, the next time is going to be more difficult, starting at 100% chance for success and then dropping all the way down to 60% chance. Additionally, the data costs are gonna increase as you move up the scale here. So you'll need to be judicious with when you decide to upgrade. In the early game, you're gonna need that data to be able to unlock schematics to move forward and progress in the game. That being said, you want to look for those jumps where you gain the additional slots. So G to F, for example, gives you that second slot, which is a huge upgrade. So now that you understand those mechanics, let's just go ahead and upgrade this guy. And it looks like we were successful. It brought it to the next level. You see the upgrade chance has gone down to 85% from 90 and that we're missing some ingredients that we'll have to go out and find. An important mechanic to understand is what happens if you fail? Well, first off, this would still indicate F to E up here, and then all of the materials that you use for that upgrade attempt would be gone. Now, that being said, you will not lose the item itself, but failure towards end game when you're talking B plus quality, these can be real huge hindrances to progress moving forward. Now that I've covered weapon, armor, and tool upgrades, let's talk about my favorite in Undead Legacy, and that's gonna be item mods. So you've got your traditional mods here that you see just like you have in vanilla, Seven Days to Die, that aren't upgradable. But then you have this awesome new subset that are upgradable. And I'll show you a table here in just a minute to help you really get an idea for this. But just as an example, if we look at Bunker Buster, it starts at 5.6% damage to stone and then continually scales up 9.2, 13.1, 15.1, etc., and goes up. So it really gives you some variety of, you know, focusing on how you want to upgrade your character and your build style. Similar to the other items I've covered, you will also have a combination of quality and tier that will dictate the level of maintenance station required to upgrade that mod. Now, I know some of these big tables are hard to consume as a video, so if you're interested, I'm gonna post these as downloadable PDFs on my Discord if you go check under the Undead Legacy forums there. Lastly, on this table, I wanna note that you've got some interesting new vehicle mods that are related to weight and how that works in Undead Legacy, but I'll cover that in another video on vehicles specifically. So if you have any questions from this video, feel free to drop them down in the comments section. I respond to everything. And if you're just starting up on Undead Legacy, consider subscribing and dropping a like because I'm going to be putting out more videos to help out. But otherwise, folks, I hope you have a fantastic day. Echoes out. As always, a huge thanks to all the folks who've supported me along the way. Stay tuned as I have a huge backlog of Undead Legacy videos coming your way along with a new series.